let me see now. I came in here for a carton of milk and a loaf of bread. Seems I got hung up with the poor necessaries instead. Well, I guess that's kind of funny. I better see if I got the money. Sometimes, you know, I wonder what's going on in my head. Senator Philip Hart made an estimate that in 1969, out of the $780 billion dollars uh, spent by consumers, $200 billion received no value. I've got consumer power. I've got consumer power. I can say Power. Manufacturers came into being into a competitive environment, wanted to increase and enlarge the volume of the sales of their products, and so they looked around and they said, why don't we communicate with the people in large volume about uh, our product and try to do it persuasively, so they called in or created advertising. Advertising didn't create the present business system. The present business system really created advertising or caused it to come into being. I think it's important that we do make that distinction. In fact, uh, businessmen will admit that. They make a distinction between people's needs and people's wants. And the function of advertising for most products uh, is to create wants, create a desire for wants uh, beyond people's elementary needs, such as basic foodstuffs. I think it's highly possible that advertising encourages people to consume more than they actually need for survival. I don't think there's any question about that. But I am not sure that all by itself is indeed a bad thing. Advertising does encourage people to learn about new products that they never thought they would need and to consider how nice it would be to own them. In order to own them, you have to have the money to, to own them, to buy them. So you go out and get a job, the best job you know how, so that you can actually own and enjoy certain things that you couldn't if you didn't do that. And so when you do that, you increase the level of purchasing power on the part of everyone. You actually buy the colored television set, and everybody working for a colored television set manufacturer benefits by the fact that a greater number of people have decided to buy. There is a kind of circulation set in motion. There's no question in my mind that advertising stimulates consumption. That's really what it's all about. But I don't think that's all that bad. To want more, to work for more, and to have a better standard of living as a result is not that much of a subject, I think, for just ridicule. For example, uh, when they're really not selling the product, they're selling uh, sexual attractiveness, uh, such as a toothpaste ads. Uh, they're selling uh, career advancement, such as if you don't use a proper mouthwash, you might not get uh, uh, promoted in your job, or you might turn off uh, your superiors. Actually, I feel that a heavy percentage of people are really not against advertising per se, although they speak as if they are but rather are they against advertising which is unattractive, boring, or in bad taste, or obviously misleading. Uh, just watch some of the television ads. Watch the techniques that are used, you know, like uh, the pain relievers and, uh, and uh, the, the pills going down the, this uh, silhouette uh, of, a, of a person into the person's stomach. Or you see um, such statements as uh, most doctors uh, agree or most doctors use or a famous hospital study shows uh, uh, a certain diet uh, pill or diet uh, wafer uh, reduces uh, 
so many pounds uh, per week, and then they have the, the sort of graphs and, 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 the, and the statistics to back it up. Uh, but when you try to write to these companies or to these advertising agencies and ask them, in effect, to prove or, or submit the tests and the data and to name the hospital study and name what doctors were polled, then the answers are, well, that's proprietary information, it's confidential, or it's none of the consumer's business, or we just give this information uh, when the government requests it, or you should rely on the truth of our statements uh, as we give them. It is illegal to mislead today. The process by which that is nailed is laborious, perhaps, but it is illegal uh, to deceive or mislead in advertising. The main uh, federal agency that's supposed to deal with fe deceptive advertising is the Federal Trade Commission, which was established in 1914. It has not been effective for a number of reasons. Uh, too much political interference, uh, not uh, sufficiently competent personnel, and inadequate authority. For example, there have been occasions where the Federal Trade Commission will go after a, a nationwide uh, company that is deceiving consumers. Uh, and it'll take 15 or 20 years before the case is finished uh, in the courts. And then when it is finished, the, the only thing the Federal Trade Commission can do is to issue a cease and desist order, which is in effect saying to the company, uh, uh, go and sin no more. You've got to stop uh, deceiving the public in this way and selling your product or service, uh, but you don't have to uh, return your profits that you unjustly took over the past uh, 10 or 15 years. All you have to do is simply uh, stop what you're doing. This allows the company simply to design a new advertising or promotion scheme, and the whole ball game starts uh, all over again. Many advertisers say if an advertisement works, that is, if it sells the product, then it must be okay. Well, I don't think uh, that's a satisfactory explanation at all. And I'd like to take an example that relates particularly to teenagers, that is, their, their exploitation by the cosmetic companies, and now it includes boys as well as girls. Notice the, the, the transition here. They know that uh, boys and girls have a pe peculiar concern about sense of smell emanating from their bodies. So they begin creating uh, names for these smells, like bad breath, this halitosis, and they exploit that concern and, and in effect associate it with the loss of social life, with a repudiation by other students uh, of the individual that's the subject of the ad, or a loss of uh, employment opportunity. These are very powerful appeals. And then the ad goes on to take uh, a simple human concern, transform it into a neurosis, and then take the neurosis and transform it into psychosis until these uh, teenagers are, are so psyched up in concern and fear that hours of their days and days of their months throughout the year are taken up with a concern about their appearance and the almost over-delicate uh, sensitivity uh, to natural human conditions. And this is done in order to drive through concern and fear and fright uh, to drive these uh, teenagers into purchasing hundreds of millions of dollars of these cosmetic products who don't even fulfill the purposes for which they're advertised very often. Well, I washed all the unsightly dandruff off my head and shaved and after shaved my face. And then I naturally, non greasily, non alcoholically, non stickily, my hair into place. And unscented to death anything offensive under either arm, and gargled my mouth bacteria free so my breath won't do no harm. And I'm whiter than white and brighter than bright, and I can take on any rat in this race. Most mouthwashes are a fraud. Most cosmetics themselves are a fraud. Most toothpastes are a fraud in terms of the promotions and the claims that are made for them. And I think this is increasing from year to year uh, because too many teenagers simply don't look at these ads, look at the appeals, see how they're exploited, and in effect uh, take control of the situation so that they are in charge rather than the companies. To suggest that advertising really has some hypnotic hold on people and cause them like robots 
to do things that are over and above and beyond their control is to seem to me, uh, once again, to be a cop-out on the part of the consumer. Economists have, uh, have shown that many uh, consumer industries, such as detergents or, uh, uh, or car manufacturers or cosmetic manufacturers or uh, patent medicine manufacturers, are basically selling pretty much the same product, only uh, with different brand names. And the appeals are different. Like toothpaste appeals are usually either sexual uh, appeals or appeals uh, to counteract cavities. Uh, car appeals, for example, they appeal to the sporty set, they appeal to the, uh, the station wagon family set, uh, they appeal to the economy set. And in many ways, the, the products uh, are produced by companies who compete more and more about less and less of any significance uh, to the consumer. Well, I went out to buy myself a brand new car and the dealer man showed me this fastback wide track Detroit shooting stars says it takes powerful men to drive this car though because it's got power antenna and power lights and power seats and power windows and power air and power heat and a stripe down the side of foot wide well, I figured I could handle it I've had it now for a little while I treat it just like a month old child I have to when the front end squeaks the rear end leaks So instead of the difference being quality, price, warranty, effectiveness, ease of maintenance, or repair, the differences are the exciting names of the products, the, the advertising slogans, the box tops, the, the, the games of chance that are associated with it, trading stamps, and the like. And this is a very, very deteriorating impact on the quality of competition. And when you see this, and then they, they cease paying attention to these qualities or these price competitions and begin, in effect, selling emotion uh, and other uh, uh, visceral appeals. I think good advertising appeals both to the emotional and the rational side, recognizing really that we are some of each. I think advertising that doesn't stick to facts and doesn't stick to reasonable logic is copping out on its responsibility. But advertising which ignores the emotional makeup of people will have a tendency to be less fresh, less imaginative, less interesting, less tasteful. There, there are certain techniques that uh, are used to persuade through advertising which any consumer can become alert to. One is the comparison. For example, a tire is advertised as stopping 25% quicker. Uh, or a particular pain reliever as being twice as effective uh, as another pain reliever that isn't mentioned, uh, or th that uh, toothpaste uh, makes uh, the teeth whiter or brighter, uh, or that a detergent makes uh, the um, uh, pillowcases uh, cleaner or whiter. Uh, these are examples of comparisons that have no meaning, because unless uh, the comparison refers to something specific, like another product, and is willing to back up the comparison with the test data, uh, then these are called dangling comparatives, and they're basically empty of content. For example, there's a dog food that's advertised as being preferred by six out of seven dogs uh, compared to the other leading brand. The other leading brand isn't mentioned in the ad. Or the tire that I just mentioned, which is supposed to stop 25% quicker. Quicker than what? A donut? Or quicker than an, another tire? Which tire? On what kind of pavement? At what speed? Uh, at what tread depth? And so these are the kinds of things that consumers can be alert to in order to sweep aside these kinds of uh, empty or fraudulent appeals and begin asking the tough questions. And the tough questions are, what is the real price of the product and how does it compare with another product of like quantity or quality? What are the characteristics of the product? Is the food nutritious? If so, in what way? Uh, is the food uh, adulterated with water or fat or chemical additives? Are they labeled? Uh, is there enough disclosure about what the product can do and can't do? And if there isn't enough disclosure at the point of sale, like on a package, uh, can the consumer write to the manufacturer and get this information? To protect himself, it seems to me a consumer has to realize that he does have a role in the dynamics, in the mechanics of purchase. That he does have and must exercise a responsibility to himself 
just as we, I think, should impose more and more responsibilities on advertising and marketing, the consumer should know that he has a role, that he should be alert, he should read and compare, compare the information about two products, and not just, as I said before, sort of yield and feel that he doesn't have a role in it. He should observe, he should compare, and he should note product differences and act on them. And I think he'll make advertising, he'll put advertising and marketing and manufacturing more on its toes. Well, I seem to have fallen on economic hard times, and I'm keeping an eye on the nickels and dimes, and being a little more careful about what it is I'm buying this time. Now, let's see now. This one here is fortified and ionized with magic simulated U-235. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, but this one's been vitaminized and freeze-dried, and I wonder if that's any better. And this one here says it's been emulsified with hydrogenated herbicides and contains genuine hexachlorophene. And I don't know if that's good or bad or what. I'm gonna write a letter to my president, my congressman. I'm gonna look it up in the dictionary. The consumer's first threshold of protection uh, is basically his own intelligence, his own common sense, his own refusal to be bamboozled or conned or fooled uh, in the uh, stores uh, where these products and services are offered or through the ads where these products and services are offered. If you don't like a product, if you think a product is being unfair or inaccurate and it's or tasteless, vote against it. Don't buy it. Tell your friends not to buy it. Write letters. Independent action is much stronger than you begin, could even begin to realize. The basic underlying current of this whole problem is simply give people the truth. Give them honest explanations. Give them honest descriptions. Appeal to their rationality. Make it entertaining, if you will. But at least try to cultivate a more critical, a more perceptive consumer who will then generate the forces from the marketplace to create a higher quality innovation, allow smaller businessmen to have an opportunity to compete, allow inventors and innovators to bring in the new systems and the new uh, products that will improve safety and health and improve the bargain uh, level of products and services sold in the marketplace. What I'd like to see is for advertising to play a growing role, and I think this is beginning to happen. In more positive aspect, more positively in certain aspects of our culture for advertising to educate people about what they can do about ecology, about government, and about sanitation, and about human problems. If advertising indeed can communicate and persuade, it seems to me that's a, a good place for us to work. And there's a growing body of people in the advertising business who are getting tuned into this and beginning to use some of their skills for some of these other purposes, and I think it's a very healthy movement. I've got consumer power. I've got consumer power. I can say yes, I like it, I can say no, won't buy it. Consumer power, consumer power. This simple study that we conducted last year, which, which uh, listed the specific claims made on behalf of various products and services, and uh, copied these claims down and sent them to the presidents of the company selling these goods and services and asked the companies to substantiate these ads with tests and other evidence can be done by anybody. It can be done by students as part of courses in home economics or in economics or in advertising. Uh, it can be done by housewives. It can be done by anybody 
who has enough time and interest simply to look at the ads or read the ads or listen to the ads and make these kinds uh, of inquiries to the presidents of these companies. Now, even if the replies from these companies aren't satisfactory, it's a tremendous self-educational uh, device to make you more alert make you more capable of spotting the, the psychological techniques and the, the polished phrases and the other uh, clever gimmicks that, uh, that override the consumer's rationality level and probe deep into the uh, emotional uh, and status psychology which the ad is aimed uh, at uh, in order to uh, promote these purchases. <laughs> Consumer power. Consumer power. 